Good morning and welcome to the weekly market update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 20th of January 2020 and the time has just gone 11.35 GMT. And to be honest, it's been a pretty quiet day today. Not a whole lot has gone on. We've seen a slight move to the downside in European stock markets. Uh, vol volatility is fairly low and um, it's likely to remain low throughout the day as the New York stock markets are closed today. As today, the U.S. celebrates Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Uh, so with the closure uh, of the American markets, volatility and trading volumes uh, are likely to be thin and fairly uninteresting and fairly low uh, on this side of the Atlantic. Uh, there's been a few bits and pieces going on. Uh, there was some unrest in, uh, in Libya and Iraq uh, over the weekend. And with that, we saw a nudge higher in the price of oil. Nothing massive, um, especially considering the, the, the upside moves we've seen in, all, in recent weeks and also if we cast our mind back to September where we saw a, a major move to the upside. So uh, it's a big enough move uh, if you're looking on a, on, a reg, on, a, on, a, on a basis of say unrest in the oil producing countries but it's been a fairly small in, in comparison to what we've seen in recent weeks and months. You know I mentioned how European stock markets are a little lower this morning, nothing massive, there's no really kind of great kind of fear factor out there. But keep in mind, uh, on, uh, on Friday, the FTSE 100 hit its, hit, its, hit its highest level since the late July, um, and where the tax is, it's not too far away, uh, it's a few hundred points away from its record high. So keep in mind, the stock markets are strong in Europe, so I'll let them move to the downside on a day when not much trading volume has been going on, volatility is low and for the rest of the trading session here in Europe things are, unfortunately are likely to remain a bit on the quiet side. Uh, things have also been kind of reasonably quiet on the economic indicators front. Uh, German PPI uh, remains in negative territory but improved. Uh, so it went from negative 7 tenths of 1 percent to negative 2 tenths of 1 percent. So it shows that demand is still soft but at least it's improving so that that, that should uh, trickle down to the manufacturing sector and in turn uh, the, the, C, the headline CPI read itself. What I'm going to do now is take a quick look at the week ahead. we we'll take a look at some of the big economic indicators and corporate stories in the week ahead of us and then afterwards what I'll do is I will then look uh, at, a, at a handful of the big of the popular markets, a few, a few of the big indices, a few of the big currency pairs and a few of the big commodities. So the weekend article can be found on our website if you go to cmcmarkets.com and then under insights and then under news and analysis. So looking ahead to tomorrow, we have first quarter figures from EasyJet. Uh, also tomorrow we have the fourth quarter numbers from Netflix. We have tomorrow also, also the World Economic Forum, the, the event, the uh, Davos event which is up usually a lot of publicity but not much action. Uh, so it's often a place for the, uh, the great and the good to get together and uh, talk about, the, uh, about how they're going to change the world or how they're going to help influence the world. It often creates a lot of um, news, newspaper articles and uh, broadcasters talk about a lot, but usually it doesn't really impact the markets whatsoever. Uh, what's likely to move the markets though tomorrow, uh, we have UK unemployment I think, between um, Tomorrow we have UK unemployment and average earnings. This is going to be a predicted focus, seeing as the chatter about the Bank of England cutting interest rates later this month has ramped up. Keep in mind, on Friday, and at the back end of last week, we had some pretty awful uh, retail, figure, retail sales figures from the UK. Uh, we have the Bank of England, sorry, apologies, Bank of Japan, I have Bank of England on the mind there. It says right here, Bank of Japan, interest rate decision uh, on, um, uh, on Tuesday tomorrow. Looking ahead to Wednesday, we have the Bank of, Bank of Canada interest rate decision. Also Wednesday, we have third quarter figures from Burberry. Keep an eye on that because obviously the likes of uh, the unrest in Hong Kong, the cooling of the Chinese economy, and on top of the fact that we have we had some by and large some fairly poor uh, retail sales stories here in the UK. On Thursday, we have fourth quarter figures from Intel. Also on Thursday, we have the European Central Bank uh, in interest rate decision. Uh, nothing really to be expected from that meeting. And on Friday, uh, we have kind of Euro 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 uh, Eurozone manufacturing and services flash PMI reports. So that, that gives a taster 
for how the um, how the service sector and the manufacturing sectors of the major European economies are doing. Like I said, I'll, I'll take a look at some of the big um, the big European the big markets uh, and see see um, see what the, the price action has been. Like I said, it's been a pretty quiet day today though. So the FTSE 100, like I said at the beginning of the video, hit its highest level since July on Friday. So the market is clearly in an upward trend. We can see here that the upward trend is still very much intact. If you continue to hold above this metric here in around 7,600, it's likely we could see the wider bullish trend continue. And should that be the case, should press on higher from here, we could look at targeting the July highs. That's in around 7,730. And if you go beyond that, we can then be looking at targeting this zone here in around 7,000, well, just, just shy of 7,800. And even if you do have a size of break to the downside, and if you do manage to take out this zone here in around 7,600, it could take us back down towards 7,500 or potentially uh, the lows that we saw in early January in at 7,470. Taking a look at what's going on, going on over in Germany, it's been a fairly quiet day. You know, keep in mind, um, we saw we saw that we saw the German market at a, at a strong finish uh, on Friday. You know, the the German DAX is currently in around thirteen thousand five hundred and thirty-five. Keep in mind, um, the region of say thirteen thousand six hundred there thereabouts will be an all-time high. So we're a few hundred points away. Um, from the, the DAX's all time high, so the market is still in quite decent shape, although trading volatility is tipped to be quiet today. But if you can manage to press on higher from here, we could be looking at retesting the all time highs in around 13,600. So if you do have a move to the downside, we could find some support from this zone here uh, in around, say, in around 13,400 down to 13,360. This kind of zone there in, in here. But even if you drop below that, sports still can be found in this blue line here. The 50 moving average and that comes into play in around 13,260, there, thereabouts. So the actual cash trading of the of, of US shares will remain closed today, but there will be some trading for the index. Uh, all so the likes of the Dow futures, the SP. S&P 500 futures, but keep in mind, we're probably going to see low volumes and therefore, and also on top of that, low volatility. But if you take a look at the price action uh, in the last few days, it's a fairly similar story between the Dow and the S&P 500. It wasn't too long ago we were achieving record highs. That just basically sums up how strong the sentiment is. So in the last few weeks and months, we can see that buying on the dip has been a popular strategy for traders. So should we see a pullback potentially down towards 29,200 or potentially down towards 29,000 itself, a big psychological number, or perhaps even 28,800. These areas could potentially all act as support should we see a decent enough pullback uh, to the downside, uh, move to the downside on the Dow Jones. And obviously, if you look to kind of press on higher from here and take out the highs of last week, we could then be looking towards 29,500. 600, 700, so on and so forth. I should now take a look at what's going on with the S&P 500. It's a fairly similar situation there. We had record highs last week, which basically tells you everything you need to know about the sentiment. But if you do manage to pull back from here, support could be found for this zone here in around 3,300, or, poten or potentially, if you go below that, this zone here in around 3,270. So, this, so the, the upper trend is still very much intact. It's only really if you have a size of break below the early July, early sorry, early January though, this area here in around 3,180. It's only really if you have a size of break below that, could then we begin to think, you know what, maybe the upper trend that we've seen recently um, in the near term has, has come to an end. But you know, essentially, while we hold above these, comfortably above these areas here, it's likely we could see further gains be made. So if we do press on higher from here, and if we take out the recent highs, we could be looking at targeting 3,340, 50, 
so on and so forth. I'll take a look at the currency markets now, which is pretty quiet to be honest, and pretty dull as far as euro dollar goes. But I'll cover it anyway because I know it's pretty popular with clients. So broadly speaking, from October onwards uh, through through late December, it's been in an upward trend and it still largely remains in that upward trend. And while it holds above this blue line, this, this yellow line here, the 100 day moving average, which comes into play at one spot 10 is 65. If you can hold above that, it's likely that we could see uh, the wider upward trend continue. And should that be the case, we could be looking at targeting. Uh, the mid January high in around one spot 11.72. And if you go beyond that, we could really look at heading up towards one spot 12. And a move beyond that could take us up towards the highs of early August in around one spot 12.50, there, thereabouts. Like I was saying, volatility and volumes are likely to be low because with the US Auto Commission. The financial markets as a whole is likely to be very quiet. But if we do see uh, a move to the downside on, uh, on Euro dollar, I should take out this metric here, the 100 day moving average. It could take us back down towards this zone here, down around 1 spot 10. And it's only really if you have a size of break below 110, could then we begin to think, you know what, maybe the upward trend we've seen between October and late December, the last few months, maybe we should be kind of cutting that into question. And then maybe we could, we could see the market retest the 109 area. Pound dollar is basically basically flat on the day. Um, so the broad view between September uh, onwards has been in a solid upward trend. We've given back a fair bit of the ground that was achieved in December on, on the back of the, um, the, the decisive win. By the Conservative Party at the UK general election, but if we could hold above this area here, the 129 area, there thereabouts, if we could hold above that area, it's likely we could see the wider upward trend continue. And should we press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting one spot 32. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking at heading towards the high of late December in around one spot 32.84. And then if you go beyond that. We could then be looking at targeting the one spot 35 area. But if we do have a fairly sizable break below 129, that could take us back down towards this red line here, which is the 200 day moving average, and that comes into play at one spot 26.89. And if we even move below that, we could take us back down towards the one spot 26 area. We did see, have seen some consolidation in that area in the past, so it's likely we could see uh, it could be of importance in the future. I mentioned at the beginning of this video about how we saw a move to the upside in the oil market, given the unrest in oil producing country, countries such as Iraq and Libya. And if you take a look first here at Brent crude, if you take a look at the, kind of the trend since October, it's been very much in, in an upward trend. Granted, I'll admit, the, the moves that we saw in early January uh, on account of what's going on with Iraq, went on with Iran was very unusual. And uh, it created, put in a huge additional amount of volatility, which has largely dropped off. So we've the spike to the upside, we've given up a large chunk of those gains, we fell back below the pre-Iranian tensions issue. But notice how this red line here, the 2 moving average, which comes to play in around 64 spot 42, broadly speaking, it acts as fairly decent support. So while we hold above that, it's likely that the wider upward trend could continue. And should we press on higher from here, we could be looking at retesting the kind of 69 zone on Brent. And if you go beyond that, we could then be looking heading towards the psychologically important 70 bucks a barrel. But if we do have a, have a decent break below the 30 moving average, that could bring the 130 moving average, this yellow line here, into play, which comes into play just north of $63 per barrel. That is the Brent market. Let's take a look at what's going on on WTI. It's a fairly similar picture. So if you actually draw a line between the lows of October and also the lows well, of early October and mid, and mid October on, on uh, WTI, we get this trend line along here. We can also see how when the market, when the WTI market sold off in, after 
de-escalation of tensions between the between Iran and the US. We saw similar situation on the market fell back below the pre-tensions level, but also, broadly speaking, it managed to largely hold above its 200-day moving average, this red line here. So if you can hold above that metric, we could see the wider upper trend continue. And should that be the case, we could look to head back down, back to, to the psychology important 60 bucks per barrel region. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking heading up towards 62. And essentially, while we hold above this trend line along here, it's likely we could see the wider upper trend continue. But if you do see a decent break below this trend line, that could be a signal that the kind of upper trend of the last few months has come to an end, and that could head, that could send us back down towards the uh, potentially to the 54 region. Lastly, I should take a look at what's going on in gold. So gold also got caught up with the Iranian uh, tensions issue. We saw the metal printed a fresh multi-year high, a fresh uh, six-year high, six and a half-year high in January on the back of the Iranian tensions. But then, of course, once things de-escalated, the metal gave back a fair bit of those gains. But we do appear to have found some sort of a base in around 1536 area, this region here. This, uh, this, and if we could hold above 1536. We could look to press on higher from here, and should that be the case, it could take us back up towards the kind of um, 1576 area, 75 area, in this region here. And then if we go beyond that, we could head back up towards the psychologically important $1,600 an ounce mark. But keep in mind, we have seen uh, things cool off considerably in recent weeks. So if we do have a very decent break back below uh, 1536, that could take us back down towards... 15.20, and if we go below that, we could be looking like heading back down towards the psychologically important $1,500 per ounce uh, mark. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, have a good week trading, and please tune in next week. Thank you very much.